Hello everyone. So let's do in this video talk a little bit about data runs and see how we can uh, like calculate them and or uh, like parse them and understand them. So in this video we have this file and this file, okay, which uh, we did them in our previous videos and at the beginning they were kind of excuse me, part of the uh, MFT Slack, but then we increased their size, so they became uh, no longer, they were no longer fit into the MFT Slack, so they became located outside, okay? So you can see this one and this one, okay? We can see that. Now let's look at finding how to read these data runs, the NTFS data runs. So if we go here, right-click, navigate, file record, and now if you go to the data run uh, or the data sorry uh, the uh, data attribute so the data at attribute is the one that starts with 80 this is the idea of data run and the size is 48 so if we do highlight all of these you can see down here it's 48 so this means these are actually our data run okay this means this is our data run so what i'm going to do let me close this we don't need it really anymore let me bring Notepad so I can explain this in Notepad easily. So let's write them down 21, uh, 0, 2, 48, and then we have 2C. Now, this, this, by, this byte over here is actually divided into 2, which each nibble represents something. So this represents the where the, the byte, how many bytes is there in the, in the cluster number so here it says two so it means we have two bytes representing the cluster number okay and here we have one byte representing the run count so this is actually pointing this one is pointing to this byte over here while this nibble is pointing to these two bytes over here so this means these are here and then this the run count is two so we know now that the, uh, let's say, number of clusters equals two. We know that. But now the cluster number, so the cluster number, uh, let's do this, equals, what does it equal? Let's save this, just uh, uh, data runs. And we'll do complicated cases as well, maybe. So let's do this. So what we need to do now is just come uh, Use a calculator and let's do programming calculator so programming okay and now let's convert this so we have two uh, sorry we have hexadecimal so we have 2c okay because this is little indian 48 so this is our this is our cluster number okay this is our first cluster number so cluster number or first cluster equals this right and then the second one and second equals uh, seven because it's contiguously after this file after this cluster now you will say let's prove that yeah let's prove that if you do right click and if you go to navigation list clusters so let's get this one and we can see that we have total of two clusters we don't have any fragmentation because it's one block or they are one after the each other and uh, so there's no fragmentation at least in this case and we can see that the cluster uh, the first cluster is 11336 the second one is what 11337 because they are contiguously what after each other let's do an example for the another file b file so if we do right click same thing navigation seek file record and again, if we look at where is our data attribute, it's over here. It's 48 bytes in hex. So it's all, all the way down here. And we can see these are what the cluster values. So let's do this again. Let's copy all of this. But this time, so let's do this for a file.txt. And this is for the b file.txt. Now let's change the numbers. We have 2202, but here we have four. A, so I have 4A and we have 2C again. So we have these two bytes representing what? Our byte, the cluster number of the, the first cluster number 
is represented in two bytes. So the first cluster number is represented in two bytes. If this was three, then we would have, let's say, just an example, maybe a value like this. So these will be all the values for the first cluster number, but we have only two. So that's why these two bytes represent the cluster number. This represents what? Represents the run count, number of clusters or the run count here number of clusters it's two so first cluster number let's calculate this it has it says let's bring this over here let's clear this go to hex and now we can see it's 2c for a it's 2c for a and this is our value so this is our first cluster number 11338 and then since the next the next one will be 11339 because we have two clusters. Let's validate. Right click. And okay, we know this is evaluation. Right click, navigate list clusters, and let's bring this again. We can see this one starts at 11338, and the other one starts, the next one will start at 11339. We have two clusters, like we saw, we wrote down here, and there is only one single fragment. Okay, so let's do now another test. Let's increase the size of the files. So if we go back here, uh, not this one, sorry. If we go here, yeah, that is my drive. Yep, this one. So let's open the file, the A file. And let me bring only uh, from my computer, okay? Let me bring only 512 bytes. So I'm gonna add another 512 bytes. So in this time, the size is kind of less than 2k so it's 1536 and this should now have what have fragmentation so let's see hopefully that we can uh, get some fragmentation in here so let's close and then tools open disk ntfs yes take a new one please and if we go to file and if we now scroll down here we can see these are the a's these are the a's then the b's so there is fragmentation because the Bs are there. And then this is a PNG file, right? There's a PNG file with, which got also inserted here. And then we, we should see our A's immediately after that. Exactly. So there is fragmentation in here. Now we do have fragmentation. How are we going to calculate that? So let's go again. Uh, file record. Find our what MFT. Uh, so here's our data attribute size again all the way down here. Now let's calculate this. So if we do that, let's do the calculation. So 21, 0, 2, we have 4, 8. Okay, we have 2C, similar to what we saw at the beginning. But now we have 11, 0, 1. We have 0, 8, right? We have 11, 0, 1, and 0, 8. Yep, so let's do this. So these are all exactly the same. This is not going to be any different. It's exactly the same. And this is also still for the A file. Okay, now what we have different is this part. So this part has already been calculated. This is what is new. Let's see what this, this means. So the one again is for the num how many bytes is in my cluster number. So we know it's one and it's this 0, 08 byte. And we know we have one byte also for what? Our uh, number of clusters or the run count. So it's also here 0, 01. So what this means is our next cluster if we add 08 to the last one the sorry the first one which is 11 so this is a relative by the way number so if we add 11336 and for 8 it will be it means our uh, next cluster cluster number uh, is 11 3 4 4 right 11 3 4 4 and we only have one cluster, so it's just 11.3344. Uh, Let's go ahead and prove that. Right click, navigation, list clusters. And now we do have fragmentation. So we can see first one starts 11.336, then 3.37, just as we saw, 3.36, 3.37. And then there is uh, another one at 3.44, which is, again, this is a relative value to where the previous one was. And we do have two fragmentations. We do have two fragmentations. Let me do this. Let me show you. Let's assume we are going to increase the size of the Bs. So I'm going to increase the size of the B. And this one will also lead to fragmentation, by the way, in the Bs. So if we do this and go to the end, increase. 
So now we increase the size of the B, but I'm also going to increase the size of the A again. I want to add uh, more fragmentation to the A file. So I'm going to add more A's. Okay, to the end, save. And now if I check this should be, yes, 2048. Great. So let's close this again, and we should have two fragmentations now, hopefully. And <coughs> just to show you how this will be calculated, let's go to the A file. We navigate again, A, then we have the Bs, right? And then we have the PNG, which we added, right? And then just continue, see? Let's continue, continue. Then we have the A's again, one cluster. Then we added the Bs, so another cluster of Bs, and then we have the, the A's again. So it seems we have multiple fragmentations in here. Let's now uh, do the calculation. So if we go again, seek file record, uh, this is where the data run is located. The size is 50, so it's going to be all the way down to is this 50? Yep, so this is 50. And we can see now that we have what? We have everything similar to this, by the way. So I'm just going to copy it down. But this time, what do we have? So 210248, this is all the same. 1101, then 08. Then we have another 1101, and then 02. Okay, 110102. So these are the ones we need to calculate for our third fragment. So what this means again, the one, one is for the byte. So this is the byte, which is 02. And this means our uh, cluster uh, equals cluster number. If we go relatively to this file or this cluster, so it's two relative to this, then this will be 11, 3, 4, 6. Okay, and our run count here is 0, 1, so it means we only have just one cluster. Okay, it means we only have one cluster, but now it's in three fragments. So right-click, let's validate that uh, list clusters, and if we get this again, we can see we have the first one again. We already saw that, 336, 337, then 33, then sorry, 11, 344, and then this is this two is relative to the previous one so this was at 11 3 4 4 so this one is at 11 3 4 6 and we only have one cluster so that's why we have this over here uh, so if we add more clusters by the way we'll just have an like a multiple entries in here probably i'll do another video for that but for now i think this is enough to explain how we can read these uh data runs and find the file and even if there is a fragmentation we can uh, understand how to read the cluster numbers of that file so that's it for this video uh, hope you hope this was useful to you and see you in some other video have a good one